Hey, climatologists, this is our very last lesson for Earth's Changing Climate, and this is a celebration of all of the exciting things that scientists are trying to do to, to solve climate change issues. And we're going to focus today on all the different things we can do to combine some of the really great solutions that you read about in Lesson 9 and 10 and then talked about in Lesson 11 as well. So let's get started. Our investigation question for Lesson 12 is... What other climate issues are humans trying to solve? And so we're going to start with a sim challenge. And so what you're going to do in a moment is go on to Earth's Changing Climate Sim. And we're going to try to keep the temperature as stable as possible, but we're going to have the population of Earth not change. So we, we have to do all the climate change solutions to try to, to figure out how we can have a stable temperature, even though our global population will stay the same. Okay, so here are the directions. So use the Earth's changing climate simulation and select human activities mode from the global navigation menu at the top. And then leave the population at 7 billion because this is close to what world's population is right now. And then you're going to adjust combustion per person or livestock per person, adjust forest cover and gas capture. So try all the different solutions to find a way to keep the temperature on Earth stable, even though our population isn't changing. So we'll try out some of these solutions and see what we can do. And then when you succeed at the mission, make a couple sketches on your notes of what was happening in the Earth system with the graph or with the ice cover. Just kind of record some of your observations. And the final thing is don't let the temperature reach 30 degrees Celsius. That's too hot. That means all the ice is melted. And so we're, we're really trying to avoid that. And then after we're done with that, we'll read a couple of um, celebration articles about um, what to do about sea level rise and what to do about something called the ozone. And we haven't talked a lot about either of those issues during this unit. So it's a good way to, to end our climate change unit, just kind of on a positive note with celebrating some of our successes. So let's get started by going to the sim. And if you can get on the sim yourself, then go explore it and then come back. But the way to get on is to go to the seattleschools.org and then open the student portal and then go to your student account through Clever. If you're not a sixth grader at Seattle Schools or if you can't access your Amplify account right now, then you can stay right on this video and I'll make, um, I'll make some changes in the sim and you can watch with me. Okay, I've just opened Amplify Science and I'm going to click on the global navigation menu and scroll down to Science Apps and select Earth's Changing Climate. If you've already explored this sim a little bit, you'll know how to find the human activities mode, but I'll go ahead and show you once it's loaded. At the very top, there will be, oh, there it is. There's a menu and we're going to click on it and select human activities. And after we load it, we'll see that on the surface of the earth, there's all these different people and cows. That represents the Earth's population and livestock per person. There are also cars. Those represent combustion, even though combustion also comes from power plants and airplane travel and factories and all different kinds of things. It's represented here with a little tiny car. Okay, so the thing that we're going to do, let me move my picture a little bit out of the way, is we are going to try to figure out what we can do to the things that we can change, like the gas capture, forest cover, livestock per person and combustion per person to keep our ice level stable. And if we want to keep special attention to the global average temperature right now, it's about 14 degrees Celsius on average. We don't want it to get higher than 30. And we really want to try to keep it as stable to 14 as we can. So let's start by hitting play. And oh, actually, before I hit play, let's take a look at the graph because the graph is going to help us see that the temperature right here is at 14. And we can also see what the carbon dioxide and methane levels are. And we can also see surface temperature, sorry, surface ice and absorbed energy. That might be a lot to have all at once. So I'm going to get rid of the gases, even though we know that that is what causes the effect of climate change. We want to see um, just the measurements of the things that we can observe, like the temperature and the amount of ice. So um, we can't change population, but we should try to reduce the amount of combustion per person according to what some of you said was a really good solution for climate change. So let's move that to low. 
And we also know that we can reduce the amount of methane in the atmosphere if we were to reduce the livestock per person. So let's try that. And then let's increase the amount of trees. So if you look down here, you can see that a lot of trees have been clear cut, but what we've discovered in the sim and from the readings we did in lesson nine and 10 is that if we increase the amount of forest cover, that's just replanting trees where they've been cut down, then that actually allows us to capture more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because plants and trees use that to make their own food. So gas capture is another one. We want to use that to try to pull out some of the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Let's leave it at low for now and see if some of these other changes might stabilize the system without adjusting that. And if we need to, we can come back and adjust that. Okay, so I'm going to hit play. And right away we can see that the ice is just right here. It starts here, but it kind of fluctuates back and forth. But let's see if we can leave it there. We have energy coming in and out of the system. The global average temperature was at 14 when we started, and it seems to have risen about half a degree, um, which then caused the ice to melt. It's rising still, maybe a little too fast, so I think we might consider changing gas capture up to medium. And let's see if we can stabilize the system. Okay, it's dropping back down. So we're pulling some of the methane and carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And so now we can see that it's hovering around 15, then it went down to 14 point something, and then 15, but it's definitely stabilizing. Um, so from doing this activity, we can see that we can leave the population of our planet alone. If we change some of our behaviors, we can solve this problem, which is kind of exciting to, to see that happening here in the sim. And if you have a chance to go on the sim, go ahead and do that and explore it on your own. It's really kind of cool to try different things and see what's the best possible solution. Okay, so the next part of what we're going to be doing in this lesson is reading an article called, What Are We Doing About Sea Level Rise? And this image here, this animated GIF, it explains the idea of sea level rise, which is that ice that's currently on the, the land, so glaciers, when it melts, the water goes into the ocean and that rises up the sea level, which, um, which then makes the coast come in more and it can cause tidal flooding and lots of different things. So it's an issue that climatologists are looking at and trying to solve. So let's read an article about what are the things that we're doing right now to try to, to solve this problem. Okay, I've gone back to Amplify, but now instead of clicking on Earth's Changing Climate Sim, we'll scroll back up a little bit until we find the library. And when we have that open, we are going to open an article called What Are We Doing About Sea Level Rise? And that is right here. So in this article, you can see a picture of a family and they're standing um, right at the edge of the sidewalk and the street in front of them is completely flooded. And so many communities are finding that as sea levels rise, there's more flooding in their community. And so this picture here says, as sea levels rise, flooding in coastal cities will become more severe. So those would be cities built on a coastline. As the climate on, Earth's as the climate on Earth warms, glaciers and other frozen water sources are melting. All that extra liquid water is going into the ocean, causing the water level to rise and cover up some areas that are currently dry land. Scientists predict that global sea levels will rise between 0.9 and 2.1 meters, or three to seven feet, by the year 2100. If that happens, places near the ocean that have elevations lower than the rising sea levels will be covered in water. In some very flat areas on the world's coast, for example, near Miami, Florida, many people could be forced to find new places to live and work. Rising seas can also affect weather patterns all over the world, causing severe flooding during storms. To prepare for rising sea levels, some coastal cities are already preparing to change and rebuild some areas so that they won't end up underwater as the nearby ocean rises. As sea levels rise and more intense weather becomes more likely, many coastal cities have water drainage systems that may not be able to handle the amount of water flowing into them. Some cities are, are already improving their drainage systems so that more water can drain, less water backs up in the system, and flooding becomes less likely. Some cities are doing even more and exploring even bigger projects to prepare for sea level rise. 
Some cities are even building floating architecture that will rise with the sea level. The city of Rotterdam, located in the Netherlands, is already slightly below sea level and very flat, and its residents expect that many areas of the city will be underwater within the next few decades. To see how well floating buildings would work for their city, they built three buildings that float in the public harbor. The buildings are accessible by boat and floating sidewalks, and are being used as public spaces that show off green ways of designing and building for the future. The, building, the buildings work so well that the city of Rotterdam plans to build more than a thousand floating homes for people to live in as the water around the city rises. Other coastal cities like New York City are looking into wetland restoration to help protect them from, from storms and flooding. Wetlands are marshy areas where land and shallow water meet, and they can act like sponges, absorbing extra water before it gets to the city. Wetlands are flexible ecosystems that can store lots of extra water, absorb energy from large waves caused by storms, and keep dirt from eroding and moving around too much. All of these things can help protect cities from flooding. Like New York, many coastal cities already have wetlands nearby. By protecting wetland areas and restoring the health of damaged wetlands, cities hope to protect themselves from the flooding that comes with sea level rise. So you can see in this article that there are a lot of really hopeful things that cities are doing to try to, um, to, try to solve the problem of sea level rise. So as a climatologist, these are the kinds of problems and solutions that you could continue to work on as you study these issues in more detail. So this has been, this article has been about solving a problem, but the next article is about stopping a problem. And so let's read the second article. The title of this article is called A Hole in Earth's Ozone Layer. So let's read that article by going to Amplify Science and I will go back to the library and this time I'm going to choose the article that's called A Hole in Earth's Ozone Layer and we'll continue reading that. So in this first picture you can see a, a satellite image of Earth's surface and if you look at it you can just see this blue line that's kind of like a layer of gas and that is Earth's atmosphere. It's a pretty cool picture. Earth's atmosphere is a layer of gas that surrounds the planet. Some of the gases in the atmosphere block energy from getting into the atmosphere, while others let energy pass through. Earth's atmosphere is a layer of gases that surrounds the entire planet. Each gas in the atmosphere interacts differently with energy. Each gas may absorb energy, reflect it back to where it came from, or let it pass through. One of the gases in Earth's atmosphere is called ozone. Ozone allows some kinds of energy to pass through to Earth, but it absorbs a type of energy from the sun called UVB energy. A layer of ozone about 10 kilometers or 6 miles above Earth's surface surrounds the planet, keeping UVB energy from reaching Earth's surface. This layer of ozone protects humans from harmful effects of UVB energy, such as skin cancer. In the 1970s, scientists noticed that the amount of ozone in the atmosphere was decreasing all over the Earth, but the change was especially noticeable over Antarctica. Beginning in the 1970s, scientists noticed that the amount of ozone in Earth's atmosphere was decreasing. The change was taking place because a chemical reaction between the ozone in the atmosphere and certain types of chemicals made by humans and used in refrigerators aerosol spray bottles, and fire extinguishers. The ozone layer was becoming especially thin over Antarctica. As the ozone layer became thinner, scientists predicted that humans would see increased rates of skin cancer and other diseases. And here's a picture of someone using an aerosol can. It says the thinning ozone layer was partially caused by the chemicals used in aerosol spray cans. Companies that make these products now use different chemicals to make their spray cans work. The hole in the ozone layer has caused an increase in the amount of UVB light that reaches Earth, which has had health effects for humans and other species. However, UVB light is less than 1% of the energy from the sun, so the increase in UVB caused by the ozone is not significant enough to raise global temperature. Global climate change is being caused by energy that can escape Earth's atmosphere, not by extra energy reaching Earth. 
the hole in the ozone layer is not a cause of global climate change. There's good news about Earth's ozone layer. After scientists began to study the growing hole in the ozone layer and identified the chemicals that were causing it, many countries agreed to ban the use of the, those chemicals. Companies were required to invent refrigerators, spray bottles, and fire extinguishers that use different chemicals. People stopped releasing the chemicals that were causing the ozone hole. And that solution is working. The hole in the ozone has shrunk since 1989 when the chemical bans went into effect. The hole in the ozone layer was caused by human activities, but now human activities are causing it to shrink. I especially love the ending of this article because I think as we have been trying to figure out what are the different human activities that we could change, like we did when we went into the sim, we realized that humans, human activities, although it's caused some of the problems in our atmosphere and with climate change, we also have the power to change human activities. And the solutions that you wrote about in the blog post and the different things that you've been learning throughout this unit and the way that you reached out to your community are all things that will have an effect on how we can solve this problem of climate change. I'm so excited to have reached the end of this unit with you and I feel like we've learned so many things and figured out so many things about what causes climate change, what causes the ice on Earth's surface to melt. And then as we discovered what was causing that, we figured out some solutions so that we can solve this problem. I think you should be pretty proud of yourself too. Thanks so much for joining me for this lesson today.